Thank you, everybody. Just a, a brief update on Blackrock Mining. Um, Blackrock Mining is a Tanzanian-based graphite developer, um, and we have the Mahingi project. A little bit about who we are and what matters to us. We use the, the motto, simply better. And what we're really trying to do with that is to simplify the project so it is a straightforward run through to execution. It's a straightforward run to financing. In the, in the idea of simplifying the project, it really has supports us as we take the project forward. A couple of key points about this. We have POSCO on board as a now a 13% shareholder. Um, and POSCO comes on board and it validates our product. POSCO is a, a globally significant anode producer. And what we're able to do with that is then leverage ourselves further into, into, the, uh, into the value chain. Company at the moment's cashed up. We've got a bit over 30 million Australian in the bank having uh, been into the capital markets last year. So we're well funded to take the project into construction. A little bit about people, about who we are. Um, our board and senior management here is really uh, composed of people who have built mines and will continue to build mines. So Chairman Richard Crooks, um, Richard's well known to everybody, um, ex-Macquarie, uh, ex-EMR and now with Lionhead. So very, very good uh, credentials there. Um, Ian Murray, who uh, took the gold road business from a, a very small exploration junior right through to a $1.5 billion gold company. And internally, in terms of the management, a couple of highlights there. Um, you know, we've got Daniel Pantony. Daniel was project manager for Sirius Balama. So what we've been able to do is take those learnings from elsewhere in the industry and bring them to our project. Graphite gets a lot of press at the moment around batteries. Um, and if you look at battery chemistry, there's a bit of a, a tech war going on. Do you go LFP? Do you go NCM? Do you do any of the other? technologies out there. And what really happens with these things is nickel and cobalt prices change. It impacts the relative cost of a battery. Um, I'll leave you with two thoughts on them. Every battery has lithium and every battery has graphite. Uh, well, as I point, John's law of batteries is every cathode has an equal and opposite anode and we're in the anode business. Significant growth going on in, in, in the battery space. And what we're seeing is an increasing trend of natural flake in the battery. And what's driving that increasing trend is it is much easier to put silicon and other anode enhancing performance into uh, a natural flake as opposed to a synthetic. So as we're starting to see the tech race catch up in the anode space, we're starting to see more of a swing um, into, into natural flake graphite. Take that forward and we're looking at a significant underlap in terms of availability. Now, where this comes from is it takes three to four years to, to take a project from discovery. Not only do we have to do our engineering development, but we also have to take our project through to what we call qualification. And that qualification is, a, is an iterative process where you work with customers and eventually, hopefully, you secure a customer who becomes a cornerstone off-taker. Now, if we're looking at these very significant underlaps here, say, in 2025, in 2025, we need nearly a million tonnes of production to be in qualification today just to meet that underlap. So very, very significant underlap in the graphite space. The other significant tactic or strategic issue here is the dominance of China in the supply chain. And this is particularly the case in the anode. Almost all of anode precursor is processed in China and it's processed in the HF route. Now, that's an opportunity for us because we now have a relationship with POSCO and POSCO will take on that, that uh, process for us. And what that means is that we can focus on developing a mine as opposed to having to take on China in a competitive environment and developing anode and anode precursor. Um, what we're able to do here is actually observe what's going on in the sector. Um, there's a lot of development, a lot of technology in the sector, and we'll wait till we start to see what is the right tech to come out um, and then collaborate with those people to collaborate in the supply chain as opposed to compete in the supply chain. When you look at graphite, graphite's a very simple process. It's crush, grind, float, um, and then you keep attritioning your material and you generate a concentrate at about 95%. In that attritioning process, you take large flake and you turn it into small flake. It's just a natural part of the process. So in a world where you are looking at graphite, you have a huge amount of fines. 
um, and not much large flake. And typically, this is 10% 10, 10 large flake, 90% fines. Mahengi is 70% large flake, 30% fines. Very, very important value proposition to us because it gives us a superior um, revenue line. The other part of the value proposition is our location, and our location gives us access to a world-class logistics solution. We've got the Tanzara railway line going past at Ifakara, uh, so that gives us a world-class logistics outcome, and also we have access to grid power hydro, and Tanzania with the Julius Nyeri Dam coming on board will now be about 70% hydro. So what we've got is the ore body gives us the, the revenue line, and it's the geography that gives us the, the cost position. A little bit about the revenue line, and graphite is really beginning to move off at the moment. But the key take out of this slide is you can see the fines pricing, uh, which is coming up very, very strongly at the moment. But critically, you're looking at large flake, which sells for two or three times the price of fines. And uh, last week, fines closed in, Chang in Shandong at about $1,100 a tonne FOB for 97% material. And we're the only people on the planet who can produce 97% off flotation. So how do we put it together? Very simply, uh, we, we take a modular approach, and, and the modular approach is really about building a million tonne a year module. It produces 83,000 tonnes of concentrate, 40 to 50 million EBITDA, and then we come in and just invest in a second module and a third module and a fourth module. So it's a classic bootstrap. Um, we're able to achieve $1,300 a tonne basket, and that's validated in the current spot market. Our OPEX around on, on grid is about $500 a tonne all in sustaining. CapEx, 116 mil, that's an older number now, that's 2018, 2019 off the DFS. We're in the process of updating that number now and hopefully uh, there's not too many nasty surprises as we take that forward. In terms of reserve, we've got a 26 year mine life. In that 26 year mine life, we use about a third of our resource base. So I like to think of this as being the first 25 years of a 100 year mine life. ESG, critical. Uh, we've got really good bones in the project and that is grid power, dominated by hydro, so very small carbon footprint. We're dry stacking, it gives us about an 85% water return to the mill um, and a very, very small footprint in terms of our residue uh, and a low strip ratio mine, so again, we're not managing large volumes of waste. And yeah, that really starts to tick the boxes in terms of the sort of thing that uh, yeah, a lot of the finance people are looking for. Really fundamental, this one here is the graphite playbook, and this is something you don't see in a base metal or a gold project, and that is we have to go through those gold boxes. And the gold boxes is, is you need to produce, concentrate, you put it in the hands of a customer, a customer validates it, and the customers actually have to modify their plant to your product. This is an iterative process. Uh, in our case, it took three years to get through, and we had to mill 600 tonnes of ore through a pilot plant to achieve that outcome. So very, very important in, in, in the graphite uh, space is to execute on this, on this uh, qualification step. Development timetable, um, heading into the dry season in Tanzania now. Um, this prompted the raise last week, so we've set ourselves up to be able to be on the ground once we get the finance lined up and start executing in the second half of this year. Um, we're looking at, you know, leveraging this thing up. If we get up to 50%, I think that'd be fantastic. We're really looking at first concentrate at the end of uh, next calendar year. A simple mine, million ton, tonnes a year, reasonably straightforward to execute. In terms of going forward, news flow, issue of a special mining licence is a final government permit. That's a, a process uh, step, but uh, we're waiting for that to come through. And we're really starting to initiate our, our resettlement early works and obviously updating our CapEx and OPEX. So I'll just haul up there very quickly. Um, key, key, key takeouts, we're upstream, we're not competing in the anode space, so uh, we prefer to collaborate than compete in the supply chain. Um, and we have uh, done a, an enormous amount of work around the qualification and are the only graphite player with a tier one anode producer on our register and signed up to offtake. You won't find that anywhere else. Thank you. <laughs>